think these frost grave cultists look cool. I painted 20 of them in a little more than two hours with one 50 cent brush, and I'll show you how to do it today on Dungeon Craft. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor Dungeon Master, and this channel is about all things D&D and other role-playing games. And I'm Deathbringer. Level up your game by subscribing and hit the bell icon to be notified as soon as we upload new content. If you follow this channel, you know I love minis. I use them in shots like this on this channel all the time. And today I'm going to show you how to paint these Frostgrave cultists with the cheapest brush imaginable. And we're also going to do it in record time just two and a half hours. I get asked on the Facebook group all the time, Professor, I'm new to painting, what brushes do I need to start? And the answer is, you need one brush, the right brush, this brush. It's a 50 cent brush from Hobby Lobby. It's a number eight brush. It comes in a package of 20. And most of my painting for the miniatures on this channel is completed with just this brush. This brush was recommended to me by James Wapple, who's a professional painter, link to his stuff below. Now, what makes this brush so great? It could be used as a filbert brush so you can do a fast base coat, or you can twist it into a fine point and do some nice detail work. It's not available on their web store, so you have to go in person to get it. And it takes a little digging and asking questions to find because it's not where you typically find it, like with the rest of the Vallejo paints. I do have an expensive set of sable hair brushes, size 0, double zero, all the way down to quadruple zero for doing things like eyes and eyebrows. But if you're a new painter, you don't want to get into that. One of the things you got to ask when you're painting miniatures is, who am I painting these miniatures for? Is it for competition or is it for my friends? Because if it's for your friends and for your personal use at a table, this is a pretty good job. And from here, you can't see whether the eyes are painted or not. And for this project, I called in my buddy Adhesive Tom. It's great to work because when you're working with someone who passes the time, you can also paint as an assembly line and you can check one another's work. It makes everything go faster. So so let's go to the table. I'll show you how we did it. I've always been fascinated with unboxing videos. I've never done one, but I understand they're very popular. Here we have a box of frost grave cultists. And inside we have a bunch of sprues with frost grave cultists on it. This box of Frostgrave Cultus retails for 35 US dollars. It contains enough pieces to make 20 28 millimeter cultists. There is a wide selection of torsos, heads, and weapons. It contains skeleton bits as well, but I didn't use any of these. You get a lot of spare parts, which is great because you can use them to make mangled corpse markers and severed heads. Link on how to do that below. I especially appreciate any extra severed heads. In terms of size and quality, they remind me a lot of the old Games Workshop Mordheim miniatures, and I love those. So you can mix and match and pose them how you want. Off camera, I assemble them with ActFix 705 super glue and spray. It's just like regular super glue. When you hit it with the accelerator spray, it bonds instantly. And I have to tell you, this stuff is terrific. It doesn't smell too bad. And if you're gluing lots of models, it is indispensable. I'll include a link below, even though I'm not an Amazon affiliate, so I get no kickback. But it is so great, I can't recommend it highly enough. We soak the frames for a day in warm water to get rid of any mold residue. We prime them with Army Painter Leather Brown. This is a critical choice. It makes the job so much easier since belts, boots, and tunics are often brown anyway, and if you miss a spot, no big deal. We use Army Painter because it leaves a smooth finish, not the powdery residue you get with hardware store rattle can primer. For the base coats, we used lots of Rackarth Flesh, which is a great khaki gray, Talon Sand, Baylor Brown, Steel Legion Drab, Vallejo Leather Brown, Reaper Clotted Red, Citadel Corvus Black, Canter Blue, and Bugman's Glow for the flesh. Highlights include Pallid Witch Flesh, Dawnstone, Corn Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, Halidor Sky, and Cadian Flesh Tone. If you're going to speed paint, I think the best combination is Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone, and then put a wash on it. For the metals, we use Scale Color, Thrash Metal, and Victorian Brass. You can save a lot of time and money by just going with one color. This artist chose to go with green. We chose a variety because we wanted our models to be versatile and use them as gang members and smugglers as well as cultists. But choosing one color is a lot simpler. All the belts, the ropes, many of the masks, we're just going to leave them brown. And we're going to paint the colors away leaving the brown the way it is. That's one of the tricks to painting these quickly. We're also going to be using this. This is a number eight Hobby Lobby brush. This is the world's cheapest brush and we're going to be using this to paint all 
of the models. Every bit of them, I'm not gonna cheat by using any other brush. Half an hour in, and I just completed the stitching. These are Tom's, looking good. These are better than mine, actually. Really? Oh, all right. Knock off at an hour, and I'll show you how much we did. So here they are. We got the base coats completed. They're mounted on paint stirrers with white glue and putty. White glue is super easy to pop off. The next day I did touch-ups and highlighting. I also swapped out some of the weapons because I broke one of the spears and they proved really delicate, so I just replaced them all. Here's some close-ups of the highlights. You can see the higher edges of the shield skull and leather are hit with one shade lighter, and it really makes it pop. I use Cadian Flesh Tone on the noses, brows, and cheeks. The blue on these robes is Cantor Blue, highlighted with Kalidor Sky. I painted the bases Corvus Black, a matte charcoal black, so it would just blend in with any stone dungeon terrain. This was another way we saved lots of time. And I returned to Adhesive Toms for the next step. Today we're using Army Painter Soft Tone Quick Shade. Remember not to stir it too much. Never shake it. You don't want bubbles. No, don't change. Same brush, our number eight, and we're going to just slather it on. Take care to wipe away any bubbles or excess. At first, it'll seem like you messed up all your hard work, but don't worry about it. The quick shade will run into the deepest parts and form a great protective coating against your player's Cheeto-licking fingers. The can says it takes 24 hours for quick shade to dry, but I wait 48 just to make sure it cures. The best thing about it is you could throw away your brush at the end. Oil-based paints like Quickshade require mineral spirits to clean, but with a 50 cent brush, who cares? After over 20 models, it's lived a full life. At this point, you're thinking, oh no, they're so shiny. No problem. I apply a few quick highlights to those flesh tones to make those faces really stand out. Then the final step is to hit them with a couple coats of Army Painter Anti-Shine Matte Varnish. Different people use other matte finishes, but this one works great and it doesn't leave any frosting, a common problem. And now our Frostgrave cultists are ready for the table. Here are a few more. Are these going to win a Golden Demon or a Crystal Brush Award? No, but they look pretty good. Better than any pre-painted minis you could buy. Our goal is always to get them from the box to the table as fast as possible. Let's face it, your players are going to hack through these guys in a matter of minutes, so you don't need to agonize over them. Invite a buddy over to paint, have some fun. Special thanks to Adhesive Tom for helping out on this one. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Questions or comments, you can put them below. Also below, you'll find a link to our Facebook group and Patreon, where you can get a lot of cool stuff like early access to extended videos like this one, my house rules, Deathbringer, Discord, and more. And check out Macdeath, a one-shot module I wrote with William Shakespeare and the Quest Givers. Tons of action, blood, guts, great role play with all the boring parts cut out. Available for immediate download exclusively on questgivers.com. Link below. Once again, for Dungeon Craft, this has been Professor Dungeon Master. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon, and until then, may all your rolls be 20s. Deathbringer again. Once I encountered a cult of mimes, they committed unspeakable acts. Ha 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 ha. If you have nothing better to do, click on these videos for more Dungeon Craft.